Good evening, dear friends, and welcome to our Thursday evening vigil for peace on our channel Doves for Peace. And tonight I give Brother Rob's apologies because he's otherwise uh, preoccupied. So rather than not have our vigil, I was guided to step in for him. So let us begin by lighting a candle for global peace and for interspiritual unity. And my heart is guided to read to you the Celtic blessing. Deep peace, pure white of the moon to you. Deep peace, pure green of the grass to you. Deep peace, pure brown of the earth to you. Deep peace, pure grey of the dew to you, deep peace, pure blue of the sky to you, deep peace of the running wave to you, deep peace of the flowing earth to you, deep peace of the quiet earth to you, deep peace of the shining stars to you, deep peace of the Son of Peace to you. Let us just relax, let us be still, and let us come into the presence of God, and let us relax and embrace all that is. I would like to share with you, if I may, an interesting article I read only yesterday and the article focuses on spirituality without structure and it's by Nimu Brown and I found it in the Cygnus magazine and I pray with all my heart that you might find it of interest too. Do you long for a committed spiritual life without wanting to belong to the rigid structure of former religion? Nemu Brown explores how to construct your own spiritual path, considering the implications of seeking a spiritual life that you craft for yourself. Where are your deepest spiritual roots? What sparks them into life and growth? These are the vital questions in formulating what she has termed own path. In a similar vein to the personal beauty paths forged by individual Native Americans and Canadians, her inspiring and liberating book has applications for pagans, atheists, agnostics, heretics from any mainstream faith and seekers of all faiths, of all kinds. And here we read, whatever your focus, spiritual practice, should not be about meaningless ritual repetition it should not be merely a habit or a means of appeasing others. Nor should spirituality be a wholly intellectual exercise. There is a significant place for thinking and philosophy, but spiritual experience has to be grounded in feeling the emotional impact of what we do is what moves us and takes us forward. And it is the emotional experience that is the most rewarding. Without it, we're not just going through the motions. There are religious writers from various traditions who offer submission to God as the only goal of religion. 
by this assessment, what you feel is explicitly considered irrelevant. Obedience is everything. And according to Nimmo Brown, she makes a total nonsense of spirituality, blind obedience to that which does not expose us to mystery or feel the soul is just blind obedience. And she says, so often this combines with serving someone else's agenda. This is one of the primary things I wish to challenge, she says. We have no real evidence for the existence of deity, only personal experience. Anyone seeking deity must surely look to personal experience to be doing anything other than following some other person's unfounded instructions. Where we blindly follow the instructions of others, we become desperately vulnerable to abuse and manipulation. Even if you accept that book religions are founded on the revealed word of deity, it is important, she says, to acknowledge the human influence in the process. Humans have written those words down, copied, translated and often misinterpreted. Decisions are made about which texts to include and which to reject. At the very least, this indisputable human element must make the writing less than divine perfection. We should not treat as pristine and divine that which has grubby human fingerprints all over it. Strong words. It is my impression, she says, that humans have made up the stories in the first place too. They may be inspired, but they are intrinsically human. Stories are good and useful things, right up to the point where some other human demands you place blind faith in them, treat them as literal truth and act accordingly. We have, used, we have used stories in this way through human history to justify the obscene and to quash rational and compassionate thinking. Failure to find meaning can be written off as a consequence of doing it wrong, being insufficiently pious, impatient, or a hundred other dispiriting things. Finding the line be between necessary patience and pointlessness is not automatic. And we should expect to have to work at things sometimes. If a practice doesn't resonate with you, or make sense, it may simply be wrong for you. When religions require actions that seem irrational, feel wrong, or don't make you feel anything at all, there's every chance it was never about spiritual experience. I've even had Druid practitioners tell me that I must repeat meditations that don't work for me and repeat them daily because they are necessary. To question that was, I was told, to disrespect both the teacher and the tradition. Human desires for power and control need guarding against in spiritual work. It should always be possible to question 
to adopt practice or seek a viable alternative, at the very least, a spiritual experience gives a person a feeling of profound connection, a connection with something beyond themselves. That something doesn't have to be a god. It could be a place, a person. It could be a tradition or an idea. Anything potentially can be connected with. The spiritual experience breaks down the isolation of self deepening a feeling of involvement. It gives an emotional sense of meaning, significance or elevation. This can be literally true if your spiritual moments connect you to other people. Holding that all-important doubt, it may or may not represent a literal truth the rest of the time, but either way, the psychological consequences are real. The quest for spiritual experience begins with the quest for feeling. What moves you? Has anything in your life been beautiful enough to make you cry? What took your breath away? Put you on your knees with awe, turned your world over and shook it. Those are the keys. Follow those things. Seek and court them. Make space in your life for them and treat whatever moves you as vitally important. Honor it by whatever means makes sense. The rest will come in its own time. There is no call for belief in the quest for wonder, nor do you need to ascribe supernatural meaning to what happens. The most rational and non-believing person can still feel awe, whether it is the beauty of a mathematical equation or a rainbow or a melody these things simply exist. All you have to do is encounter something that causes an emotional response within you. No gods are necessary, just your attention. And what I have read to you there is not my work. It is the work from a wonderful book by Nimue Brown, from Pagan Portals, Spirituality Without Structure. I would be interested in knowing your thoughts. And as for me, as a Catholic Christian who embraces all faiths as a member of the Teo community of interfaith Franciscans, we have a different take to the more traditional religions of the world because our God, our God is in creation. Our God is a living, vibrant force of light and love. Yes, and we call it the Cathedral of God. Nature is the Cathedral of God. And that is why I guess St. Francis of Assisi, a 12th century mystic, a humble man, an ordinary man, found a meaning and a purpose for his life. 
and though he came from a very well-to-do family who sold, well, they were cloth merchants, so they were well-connected and they weren't poor. But he had a road to a Ma's experience where he suddenly had to face his own demons and fears and realise that all the wealth, the pomp and the splendour, the good education, the influence and affluence of his family ties had no pull for him. He sensed an emptiness, a loneliness. But the moment he went to his bishop and surrendered all his wealth and stripped himself bare naked in front of all the local townspeople of Assisi. Can you imagine it? They must have been horrified. But nonetheless, he was guided by his heart to swallow his pride and fear and disregard all those watching him, including his father and mother. Can you imagine how embarrassed they felt? And the bishop felt sorry for him and placed a tunic over him. It was a brown tunic. And to this day, Franciscans wear that color brown as part of their habit. And what draws me to Franciscan spirituality, especially Celtic Franciscan spirituality, is the love of God in nature. Embracing brother sun and sister moon. Listening to the songs of the bird. And this evening after evening prayer, led by sister Elizabeth from Philadelphia, when brother Rob came in, he said, come quick, quick. I have something to show you. I want you to listen to this. And I thought, what? So we went through the front door we stood in the garden. It was dark and you could still hear the birds singing. It was the most beautiful sound. It's as if they were singing from their little hearts a chorus of song and melody to their God and to Gaia, Mother Earth. Nature is the cathedral of God. It's where I find God in the beauty of the landscape, in the stillness and in the silence. And it speaks to the soul. When you look at the different seasons and you consider the wonder of creation, it really does speak. You look at the rose in summer, you smell its fragrance, and you look at the delicate petals. What do you see? Do you just see a rose, or do you see the hand of a loving God? I see both, and I'm awestruck, awestruck. What I would like to do now is to just spend a few minutes with you in a short guided meditation. Just imagine that you've come to visit our little monastery garden. It's a beautiful garden. It's quiet. It's peaceful. And all around the garden we have different effigies representing some different faiths. We have Tiara the Goddess, the teardrop of the Buddha's eye. We have Mother Mary. We have different statues of different Buddhas. And we have a beautiful large statue of St. Francis of Assisi. And we have different bells and chimes made of metal and wood. And when the wind is up, you get the most beautiful heavenly tone 
of metal and wood. So now I want you to come into this garden and sit and be still and allow your senses embrace the beauties of creation, a gift from the Creator, Father, Mother, God, and a blessing from Gaia, the nature spirits, and Mother Earth. And as you sit and relax, you become aware of a powerful presence of love. You came to the garden, maybe feeling stressed and anxious. Maybe it was a bill, money you owed someone. Or maybe it was the concern about a loved one who was very ill and their children, or maybe a neighbor. As you sit in the garden, you bring your loved one and you place them in the center of the healing garden. And you invite Mother Earth, the nature spirits, the tree divas and elements. You invite the archangels and angels, the messengers of God, with all the holy men and women of all faith traditions. And now you can see a myriad of helpers come to help you. And they're holding you in their heart. And before you, you see Mother Mary. And she brings to you a basket of cut rose flowers. And some that have lost their petals, she picks them up. And she gives them to a little angel of a child you once knew who crossed over and has come to see you. And they now sprinkle the rose petals over you and you become so relaxed. Your breathing is less labored. Your feet are touching the sacred earth. You're receiving a healing touch from Gaia, Mother Earth. And you feel the rays of Brother Sun and Sister Moon share their light, their rays of love that are piercing you now. There is a gentleness, a softness, a stillness. With each in-breath that you breathe, you are breathing in the love of creation. And in your out-breath, you are releasing your anxieties, your tensions and your fears to Mother Earth. Be still now. Be still in the presence of your God Goddess. Be still and embrace the beauty and the tranquility of this sacred healing garden. And now allow your sense of sight embrace that beauty. What do you see? And we now embrace the beauty of this landscape through the sense of hearing. You can hear the sounds of the chimes, wooden and metal, release their soft, dulcet tones, allowing you relax in your mind, in your body and in your spirit. You can hear in the background the birds, brother and sister thrush, brother blackbird, 
the swallows have come with the blue tits and the tom tits and you can see them with their young and they're all resting on the beautiful rose bushes that are climbing up the chapel wall that offers them shelter from the winds you can see you can hear and now we embrace the fragrances around you through the sense of smell the lavenders and eucalyptus from the herb garden they are here releasing a beautiful fragrance that you're now inhaling, relaxing your mind, your body and your spirit. And all is well. All is well in the Cathedral of God. All is well. And as you sit here quietly, you are now totally relaxed and at peace. And with every in-breath that you breathe, the fragrance of lavender, patchouli, bergamot, rose, are allowing you to breathe in much slower and to allow the cocktail of fragrances be inhaled safely up through your nose, down into your lungs and around your body. And now you can feel every muscle in your body relax and experience the healing touch of a loving God. Be still. Be still now. Be still in the presence of love. For God is love. And God is peace. And God is gentleness. And whatever name you give your God, be it Brahma, Ganesh, Krishna, Source, Supreme Creator, Yahweh, Allah, Jehovah, there is only one God. And though many come from different beliefs, they are all children of the same God that makes them our brother and sister our equal. Let us hold them in our heart. Let us send them love and peace to help them on their journey as pilgrims seeking truth, wholeness and healing. And now we are totally totally free, totally still, we are love, and nothing or no one can take that love from us, because that love is God-given, not man-made. And for me, the difference between religion and spirituality needs to be shared at this time. Religion, for many of us who are Christian, especially of the Catholic community, where we were brought up on a diet of fear and control, as I was, religion represents a fear of going to hell. Whereas spirituality is for those of us 
who've come through.